So, Ash is the strongest Pokemon trainer in the world. So where does he go from here? Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. And today people, today I'm going to be discussing just what the heck to do with Ash Ketchum. As of right now, there is no true confirmation of him returning for another series based on the Paldea region. Next week's episode is titled, I'm Glad to Have Met You. As of right now, it seems like Ash and Go might be going their separate ways. So if Go leaves, that might make the anime good again. Alright, but uh, for real though, we simply do not know where the anime is headed. Will it just be Ash headed for Paldea? Will it be a continuation of Journeys? Or will we have a new protagonist altogether? The only real hint we have for the future so far is these goofy dudes Team Rocket and their interactions with the Scarlet and Violet starters. But if we want to take that and run with it for a little, Team Rocket is being used to dip our feet into the Gen 9 anime. And you know if Team Rocket's going to be in Gen 9, then so is Ash. Team Rocket's literally a direct foil to Ash, so they're always going to be with him. Since the late 90s, we've been hearing about this Ash Ketchum who wants to be the very best like no one ever was. And now, after defeating Leon, he's that. Ash is him for real. So, where do we go from here? I mean, what else does Ash got to prove? Besides maybe finding his dad? He did what he set out to do, and it's time for him to be done, right? That's what I believed for a while, until it hit me. So in the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games, what's their big gimmick that sets them apart from other games? And no, I don't mean whatever this is. It's time travel. Yup, you're hearing me correctly. If they want to continue on the anime with Ash Ketchum, then it's finally time to change his age. With Pokemon Scarlet being a game about the past, and Pokemon Violet obviously being about the future, maybe Ash could go both forward and backwards in time in this anime. Oh, and we could call it Pokemon Magenta. These plotlines could be used to give a fresh spin on Ash's quests, and if Go really does decide to stay around, then we could see him aiming to capture Paradox Pokemon, maybe each of them could use their own box art legendary to ride around on. Yeah, yeah, now that I think about it, this would be a lot of fun. Alright, now let's discuss what I would like to see in each different time jump. As for the past, there's so much amazing Pokemon lore for Ash and friends to explore. From a hinted at Pokemon War, to the original Darkest Day event, there are infinite storylines for the strongest trainer in the world to experience. Just imagine Ash traversing through ancient Hisui instead of whatever we got that was in Pokemon Journeys. Or, if later on in Generation 9, the Pokemon Company makes another Legends game, I don't know, maybe like Legends Curum or Legends Celebi, for example, Ash could experience all that. We could finally get some questions answered about that original Unova Dragon. And now that I'm thinking about it, Sinnoh and Johto have tons of ancient lore still left to explore. We could even possibly see the original beast ho -Oh revived into Suicune, Entei, and Raikou. It doesn't all need to be exploring the ancient past, though. I'd love to learn more about Ash himself. I mean, like, yeah, dude, I want to see Ash's earlier childhood. I mean, besides him meeting Serena at some summer camp when they were younger, we really don't know much about him prior to his 10th birthday. Personally, I'd love to learn about what trainers influenced Ash. And most importantly, what is the deal with Ash's father? We've been asking ourselves these questions for years, and now it's finally the opportunity to answer them. Let's talk about possible new Pokemon to add to Ash's roster. Some ancient and paradoxical Pokemon I could see Ash capturing are Hisui and Zoroark, Hisui and Braviary, and Roaring Moon. Heck, Ash could probably even bring his Qualaba to Hisui and have it evolve over there to get Hisui and Typhlosion. I could also possibly see him capturing Slitherwing, and Ash definitely would use Karayadon over Mariadon. Not just because the colors more suit Ash, but also because Ash normally connects with the legendary of the first named games in the duo. And by this, I mean, you know, Charizard in red and blue, Ho-Oh in gold and silver, Solgaleo in sun and moon, and Zacian in sword and shield. Now for the future, which I think could be a little more tricky narratively. By that, I mean if you're gonna go the Back to the Future time travel rules route, where it's all one continuous single story timeline, where every present action affects your future, time travel becomes much more restrictive and hard to write for. But if the Pokemon writers decide to go the Dragon Ball Z and Avengers Endgame time travel route, it will open the door to so much more. By this, I mean it won't all center around one single timeline, and each different phenomena would result in a new timeline being created altogether. Alright, alright, alright. Now that we got all that weird time travel exposition stuff out of the way, let's talk about some future possibilities for the Pokemon Magenta anime. So something I would love to see is a major villain arc. You know, similar to what we saw in the Rainbow Rocket arc in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Maybe Ash goes to a timeline where the villains won. 
They captured and controlled their legendaries and have created a dystopian future and no one can stop them. Then, enter the strongest trainer in the world. Man, I'm really out here writing peak for the Pokemon Company, huh? They ain't even have to do anything except maybe hit that subscribe button. Oh, and speaking of, you all should do the same. In the more near future, maybe we could get a look at an older Ash. We've seen tons of speculative fan art depicting an older Ash, and he actually looked really, really cool. In his 20s, maybe he's a protector of Earth, and also even a mentor slash role model to much younger trainers. Then maybe in his 30s, Ash begins to settle down and start a family. I won't even begin to speculate with which Poke girl, but maybe he even has a kid and passes down Pikachu and one of his hats to him or her. Could be like a little Baruto situation here. And maybe when he's an older man and retired from battle, Ash could replace Professor Oak. Man, this is kind of getting me emotional over here. Oh, and by the way, Pokemon Company, if you ever need any peak screenwriters, my line is always open. So some future paradoxical Pokemon I'd love to see Ash use are Iron Valiant, Iron Hands, or even Iron Thorns as a bit of a nod to Ash's Larvitar he caught in Johto. Definitely less options here with the future Pokemon. So overall, in this Pokemon Magenta anime, there's still so much more for Ash to do. It would definitely put a new spin on the common anime, but Pokemon Journeys kinda did the same. I mean, yeah, the normal eight Paldea gym leaders would probably get shafted, but that's just how it was in Galar. Like right now, Pikachu is probably the strongest non-box art legendary Pokemon in the entire anime. So yeah, I personally think it would be okay for Ash to skip this stuff. But something else that I think would be totally interesting to see is other challengers gunning for Ash's title. For Ash's entire Pokemon career, he's almost always been the challenger. And now that he's World Monarch and everyone knows his name, I'd love to see trainers come and try and take him on. And you just know Ash isn't one to shoot anyone down, no matter how strong or weak you are. Meanwhile, while traveling through time and space, he could meet Professor Sada, who will help him with his Scarlet past travels, and then Professor Turo, who would obviously help him with his Violet future travels. Many have speculated that if Ash is to continue on in the anime, then he should take on the role of a mentor. And who better to mentor than the coolest new rival from the Paldea region, Nimona. Now I believe Nimona can be worlds better and more interesting than Go. She is filled with charisma and a strong passion for battling, so maybe Ash could see a lot of himself in her. And honestly, while the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games have many, many, many faults, they undoubtedly produce one of the best rivals we've seen in decades. So come on, Pokemon! Bring her to the anime! Now another point I would like to bring up is the multiple storylines we see in the game. I need to see Ash battle Titan Pokemon in the Path of Legends, and would love to see him catch some unique Terra-type Pokemon after battling through Terra Raids with friends. And speaking of catching Pokemon, the Paldean team I'd like to see Ash use are Palafin, Seraluge, Roaring Moon, Iron Valiant, and of course Pikachu. And wow, this team is OP, really cool, and leaves a lot of room for some narrative, interesting fun. Also, I could totally see Ash having a Fue Coco that plays a similar comedic role like Rallet played in Sun and Moon. Or maybe this is just another region where Ash brings back old Pokemon. I mean, who doesn't like to see that? So in conclusion, there are still plenty of options for Ash to go from here. While the traditional regional route probably won't cut it anymore, time travel opens so many narrative doors. Ash isn't going anywhere. I personally view this series as a victory lap for Ash. He's done it all and accomplished his goal, and now it's time to pass down the torch to the next generation. Well guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. I had a ton of fun speculating on the future and past of the Pokemon anime, but I'm more curious to hear what you guys think. Is Ash done as the protagonist? Would you like to see some crazy plots in the Paldea anime, or more of a traditional regional based anime? I'm responding to every comment, so don't be shy. Thanks guys, and happy holidays.